Welcome to this video on basic customization in Prolog to Go 4. I'm David. And I'm Jennifer. We've redesigned our edit mode for 4.0 to make it more intuitive and efficient. In this video, we'll give you a tour of the basics you'll need to know to add and move buttons and change their appearance and how they behave. We have other videos for some more advanced features you may also want to learn about. So what you see here is the home page of the 5x9 intermediate core level of Crescendo. Let's go to one of the fringe folders like food and check out what we can change. To edit a folder, you tap the pencil icon, which is right here, and here you are in edit mode. You'll see this gray panel rise up at the bottom of the screen. This panel contains the editing tools in a row along the top here. You'll also see that the navigation bar on top of the screen has changed. We'll give you a quick tour of the screen and show you what all the tools do. To get an overview of the new tools, tap the green question mark right here. You'll see that there are little call-out labels telling you the name and the basic function of each of the buttons. There's also a button here that says learn more about edit mode. If you tap that, you'll get our in-app help. This is our manual. You can go page by page through it, or you can go to the contents and go to any page at all where you need information. You can also export the manual to any app that will take PDF files, including iBooks. So I'll close the help screen and I can tap anywhere on the screen to get rid of this help overlay. In other videos, we've talked about VOCA priority. This is the system we use to divide each folder between words you use often words you only use occasionally, and words you never use. In edit mode, you can see what is in all three levels and move buttons between the levels. So let's practice with that. First, I'm going to tap this little arrow here that will lower the editing panel so I can see more of the screen. Then up here in the upper right corner, you see the one, the two, and the little filing box. The one is highlighted right now. That means we're on the primary level. If I tap the 2, I see the secondary level, which in intermediate has all the subcategory folders. And here, if I tap on the filing box, I'm in storage. These are buttons that I can't see unless I'm in edit mode. And I can use these in the other levels that the end user can see. So I'll go back to primary. I'm going to take some buttons and let's see. These are so this primary level of food is supposed to be foods that the person who's using the system really talks about a lot. And personally, let's say this this person is a vegetarian. So we're going to move the meat and that looks like it has meat in it. We're going to move these to storage. How do we do this? Well, I've selected them. You see they have a little blue check mark. And then here I've got a button that says one with an arrow, two with an arrow, and a storage box with an arrow. The one with an arrow is dimmed because I can't move anything to primary. I'm in primary. I can move things to secondary with this button or storage with this button. Let's say I want juice and ketchup to be in secondary. And I'll go to secondary and I can see that they're there and I really love fruits and veg, so I want those folders on the primary level. You can go to one of our Getting Started videos to learn more about this process of moving things between vocabulary levels. But now I want to show you what happens when you delete a button. I don't want this pizza button, and so I'm going to tap this delete button here, the little trash can, and I get a message. It gives me choices. I can move this to storage, which means I can eventually move it back if I find I need it later, or I can delete it permanently so it's completely gone from the system. We recommend that unless it's a button that you know you are absolutely positively never going to need, just move it to storage, and that way you're not risking losing something you might want later. So uh, we're hoping that a lot of the time you'll get the buttons that you need from going to secondary or storage and moving buttons around. 
but sometimes you'll need to add a button if you can't find the button that you need already made that way. To do this, you're going to tap on one of these plus buttons. You're going to tap on the plus button on the left side to add a button. So I'll do that now. And I think I want to add onion rings because I like those onion rings. Ooh, those look good. Okay. So when I'm typing, you can see the keyboard is up here and it's not letting me see what's underneath the keyboard. I tap this button to move the keyboard down and I can see here these are some some suggestions for symbols. I like the one it's picked, onion rings, and so I'm going to accept that. I'm noticing right now that the, the border of the onion rings button is black, but the border of all of these other buttons for food is yellow. I'm going to scroll here. These are all the properties of the button. And when I get to word kind, this is the grammatical group that the word, that the button is in. I see it says phrase. That's because the app sees a space in multiple words and thinks that that means it's a whole phrase. But onion rings are actually a noun, so I can go ahead and fix that and now the button is yellow. I can create another button and I can search for some more symbols if I'm not sure what I want to, to pick. I'm going to type in a couple letters here and see, I move that down. Right now, that's not what I want. So I can tap anywhere on this button and I get a list of choices for what I can do with the image. I could delete the picture altogether, choose a symbol, choose a photo from my photo library. I can even take a picture from inside the app. But I'm going to choose a symbol this time. And here we have several thousand symbols from Symbol Sticks. I'm going to search for fruit. And, ooh, dragon fruit. I'm going to choose that. And I tap the basics to get back here, and I'm going to tap in the right name. You see, I have the same problem with the two words, so I know how to fix that. I come back here, call that a noun. So now I've added a couple of buttons from scratch. Once you've created your button, you can move it. Let me pull down the editing panel here and show you how. I'm going to hold this button until it starts to make a pulsing movement, and then I can drag it wherever I want it to go. I can put it in between two buttons, like that. I can also swap the position of buttons. Let me unselect that. I can swap the position of buttons by dragging one button on top of the other. So I'll drag this on top, and they swap positions. I can also select multiple buttons and swap them using the swap tool. So this is just going to move those three buttons, rotate them between their various different locations. And I'm going to unselect these buttons now by selecting this, the check mark with the line through it. Note that you can't move buttons on top of these template buttons. So if I try, it just snaps right back and I can't move these template buttons. I have to edit, edit the template to do that. Most of the time, you're going to want to leave the template the way it is. We've put a lot of work into the templates, making sure they're laid out exactly as the home folder is, and so you're probably going to want to leave them as they are. So you can edit many properties of a button. To edit a button, tap to select it. I'll select a dragon fruit here you'll see a blue check mark on the button. You can use the edit panels to change how the button looks and behaves. So here on the left I have the edit panel and on the right side I see the details. So for example here I have basics and that's where I see the text-to-speech, the label, the actions and I can pick a different symbol for it. So I will for example now give this a different label. I will just call it fruit. And as you can see, it has a different label, but when I will tap it in user mode, it will still say Dragon Fruit. So I can change the background color of the button. Right now it's color coded by part of speech, but if I wanted this button to stand out, I might give it a different color, maybe a nice pink color, or maybe a little cyan or green. I can change the border color too. 
I could change the border width. That's another way maybe to make it stand out. So I could make it very thick. Uh, I can change the text, make it a little larger. I could also change the color of the text, maybe make that red. I could go for a different font. Let's see what would be a fun font to use, maybe marker felt. Um, then there is the display. So I could choose to show only the image or only the label, or in this case, both. Visibility, I can make it dimmed or hidden. So if it's hidden, that means in edit mode, I can still see it. But in use mode, there will be a hole in my uh, page. And dimmed means that it will be dimmed. The end user can see it dimmed, but can not select it when it's being tapped. And then we have, for example, speech. So I could give a particular button a different voice. Word kind we have already seen. And then there are some behavioral features that are covered in another video. So these are all properties of a button. So one of the nice things is that it's possible to select multiple buttons. And for example, I can select candy and cereal and macaroni cheese. And I could give all of these at once a different background color and a different border color. I could make them look more like this. So you can select multiple buttons at once and change their properties at once. But do notice that at the top here now, I no longer have access to the basics because of course they all have a different symbol and they have a different text to speech. So it's also possible to add folder buttons. These are special buttons that open another folder. When you create a folder button, you can have it linked to an existing folder or create a new folder. Let me show you how that works. So let me go back here and here I see a tap on the right and then I can make a new folder. Note that if you have very small buttons, because you have a large grid size, you may only see the single plus button. In that case, if you tap it, you will be offered a choice to create either a button or a folder. So I'm going to link to an existing folder. And let's try something, let's say for example, colors. So I'm linking to that. Next step, I tap done. So now I'm linking here to colors. So that was linking to an existing folder. I can also make a new folder. So let me try that. So I tap again on the folder and I say, now I want to make a new folder. And the first uh, choice I get is what template to use. As I'm in foods, it really makes sense for me to use the food template, but it's possible to choose other things as well. So if I want to have something about restaurants in my food folder, I might choose places, for example, as a template. So I go next. And I will make a folder about my favorites. Favorite foods. And let's look for a simple. Choose a symbol. I want something with food, maybe. Let's see what I find here. Um, let's do this one. That's about my favorites, foods. Okay, so now I'm done. And now I've created a new folder. And in, when I open it, I will see that it has the right template, but it doesn't have any buttons of its own yet because I haven't put anything in there yet. So there are a couple of special buttons in the toolbar. Um, we've already seen the button to unselect everything. There's also a button to select everything. Now, everything isn't really everything because it doesn't select the template buttons. Those I cannot modify or change, or copy or paste, and that's why they don't get selected. If I have everything selected, I can apply, of course, a property to all of the buttons, but there are a few other things I can do as well. And let me for a moment unselect. So it's also possible to select a number of buttons, like these, for example. And then I can press the alphabetize button, which nicely sorts them alphabetically. You can use copy and paste to copy buttons between folders or between different users. We've had that uh, feature for a while. Let me just show you how it works. I'm going to unselect these buttons. And I'm going to copy French fries and onion rings. And I tap this button here to copy them to the clipboard. And now I'm going to paste them into favorite foods. So I double tap the folder to open it. And now I tap this button to paste. And french fries and onion rings are my new favorite food. And with this, we conclude our video on basic customization in Prolog to Go 4. Note that there are many resources available on our website that you may want to check out, 
including the manual that you can download to your computer, as well as a number of other videos and other useful resources.